Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and that was a timbali solo by the great Guillermo Barreto. And it's from a book, or the transcription is from a book, by my friend Mike Spiro. It's called The Language of the Masters, and it looks like this. And this is one of my favorite books uh, to use when I teach um, all forms of Afro-Cuban percussion. So the book uh, is made up of transcriptions uh, from many great players playing congas, bongos, and timbales. You heard me there playing it with the original recording. All of these recordings are available if you go on Spotify and other streaming services. I have most of the original CDs, but some may be hard to come by these days. So, But they are available, and there's even a few playlists on there with these solos. So like I said, it's just a fantastic book because it's got very accurate transcriptions. And Mike also does sort of a collection from each artist of it's sort of a best of hits solo that he writes in there that you can do. Uh, but what we're going to concentrate on in this series is just playing through the solo so you can see the stickings I use and also I can comment on a few things. Now I won't be commenting on every solo. Sometimes I'll just play them through with the recording and play them without the recording. So I'm going to play this for you once again now without the music. One, two, one, two, three, four. So there's a lot of stretch phrasing uh, in the book that's kind of hard to write out. What Mike does, he writes these lines, and I'm, again, I'm not allowed to put this on the screen, so you definitely should buy the book. Can't really do anything without it. Uh, he puts these lines over certain figures, and you phrase those as very wide, stretched triplets. And the best thing to do, and why this is so great, is that you can play along with the actual players, like I just did. Uh, earlier in this video. So I definitely suggest you do that. So uh, the stickings are not written out, and I have my own way of sticking some of these things. All the drags are done uh, a couple different ways. Uh, either do a two left like this. You can do a two right like this. And that's normally the way you do it. Now sometimes you can take those figures and stretch them out and do them singles. And I did that on a few of these figures. You can see it if you watch back. So in the beginning, you have this figure. One, two, three, four. So you see there, I'm playing that one with my left. It's almost like a rudimental uh, figure. And actually, a lot of timbali solos are very rudimental in nature, stickings. It's not like they're doing the stuff on purpose. They're not putting in rattamacues and paradiddles, but it's just what, it's what comes natural. They're just stickings. That's all rudiments are anyway. Uh, the hardest part of the solo occurs in bar 18, where you have these really fast triplets. So what I do there is I tighten up a little on the sticks just a little bit so I can get that movement going. I do that all singles. There's no doubles, there's no crossing. So you do what's called shifting. We do this when we play timpani as well. So. So you're moving like this, okay? Very important. There's no crossing unless you want to get fancy, but that can be dangerous. <clears throat> now, like I said, a lot of these figures are stretched, so they don't necessarily sound like they look. Let's talk a minute about tuning. So 
Uh, Mr. Barretto on the recording, he has his drums tuned to a, like a D and an A, all right? Uh, it's not perfectly tuned. They're a little bit flat, uh, but you can tune to the tune, and his tuning sounds great on this. So I tuned the drums to match that. So it's a little bit of a high tuning. Now, these drums are big drums, so I'm not sure what drums he was using. Could have been using a 14 and a 13. This is a 15 and a 14. So when you tune them up like that, they might choke out just a little bit. Normally, I'll use a little bit lower tuning, but I'll tune the drums either in a fifth or a tritone, sometimes a fourth, but I try to stay around a fifth. So a tritone is a little bit um, lower than a fifth. It's a diminished fifth or augmented fourth. The heads I'm using here are the um, actual original heads. These are JCR drums, by the way. I have several um, videos on the cowbells, which are these. Uh, these are JCR cowbells. There's no cowbells in the solo, but obviously in the tune. Well, actually, there's no cowbells in this tune. They're just playing paya on the side. Pretty much through the whole thing. So it's a, it's Kachow, the bass player, so it's a vamp. Uh, but the heads are they're just regular Remo coated ambassadors. You can see here if you can, if it comes out on the camera. These are the original heads. I put them back on that I got uh, when I bought these. I do have calf heads for these, but they're very thin and it's summer here, so I would have to crank them up too much and then risk breaking one, so I'm not going to do that. I do put them on in the winter, though. They sound great, uh, but I'll use coated ambassadors. You can also use clear ambassadors. I like the way the coated ambassadors feel. They feel a little better, have a little more bite uh, for me. So uh, that's this particular solo. Like I said, I'm going to, uh, this is the introduction to the series. I'm going to go through this whole book eventually. Uh, it's going to take a while because <laughs> I'm real busy these days. But I'll do all the timbali solos first because they're the easiest. The conga solos are very, very difficult. And there's also some really nice bongo solos. So we'll see you next time with the next uh, Guillermo Barreto solo. Thanks.